All right, good morning, everybody. I thought I would take a second to show you how to set up an Arduino Uno to run a linear rail or a NEMA 23 stepper motor. Uh, that's just a good uh, visual example. Um, usually you're using a template that I use a lot and code. I'm not going to go too far into the theory, but I thought this would be a great example. So as you can see, it's bouncing back and forth. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off so we don't have to listen to that while I'm talking. But essentially what we have here is a NEMA 23 stepper motor, two limit switches, and our Arduino Uno. So and I'll go through parts and everything in a second. But the overall operation of this code is to run back uh, home itself using this limit switch and then once homed I'll set from that limit switch and then go back and forth at different speeds as set by the user. And that's mostly what we're going to be covering is like the ease of use of these templates and you should be on the user setting page. I'll link the code and the description and also if you need help feel free to reach out um, on Discord, which I'll also link, uh, link in the description, or if you'd like a project hired out that's using an Arduino or a PLC to run stepper motors, um, feel free to reach out and I'll estimate your project for you. However, here's the basic wiring diagram. Uh, simple stepper driver, stepper motor, 24 volt power supply, Arduino Uno, and two limits. Um, there's better, way to, better ways to wire the limits if you're doing it like an industrial application, but since this is just in my office, as a practice test station, just one of the different test stations for when I'm practicing code. Uh, that works just pulling them high in the code and then having a ground as the signal. It works fine. So the parts are also listed here in the notes. So if this is not expanded, expand that out and feel free to uh, use those links to buy the same parts if you'd like. And let's jump right in. So the first line is just a usability thing. So if you change this to 1, it would turn on the debugger, and that's just the serial output. So all the code that I've written into the main code that uh, tells the user where it's at. So all these things like debug, you know, where it's at, and that's telling the user, like, hey, I'm backing off the limit, I'm ready to enter the run. Uh, but those things aren't needed once the code is functioning. So uh, if you're editing, you can go ahead and swap this debugger to 1. It'll give you the serial readouts, but I like to turn it back to 0 when I'm not in use because Stepper motors run a lot smoother when you're not having to do tiny interruptions to uh, push out serial data. Next up is driver settings and limit switch pins. And we'll do more examples. Sorry, it'll be kind of boring running through the code, but I'll show you how you're going to customize it to your linear rail examples as we go. But the first of these pins are the forward and rear limit switch. Everything should be named. Pretty easy to read uh, what it is, so rear limit switch pin. Uh, it is important to leave these as 2 and 3 if you're using Arduino Uno or Nano because those are the interrupt pins and we use the interrupt pins for the uh, limits for this code. Alright, uh, and interrupts, in case you're not familiar, they're running in the background just makes it a lot smoother, especially when you're doing steppers. Again, tiny interruptions at different speeds uh, can be noticeable, so it's good to use the interruption cam. Next pins used are the stepper driver pins. So those are, as you saw in the diagram here, the pulse pin, direction, and enable. And they're wired as seen here in the code. You can change these, just make sure you leave them at a digital pin and that you redeclare it here. So example, you change this to maybe pin that it's already taken and you need pin 12. Change it to 12, re-upload the code. All right, these are a little bit weirder, but let's say, for example, this one. So you have a weird driver and it's enabling your motor when it's not supposed to be running, it's disabling the motor when it's supposed to be running. What you can do there is swap this value to false and then re-upload the code and then it would swap the enable or in, invert that single signal. So it'll automatically change all my code to invert this enable signal. And then next up is the direction setting. So that's the first good example we can do live. Um, so as you saw there, or as I'll show you again, the first movement is going down. Let's go ahead and reset and you'll watch it go down and then it just goes to this regular sequence after homing. Let's say you wire yours up and it's completely the opposite so everything's working in reverse and you don't want to go in and change your wiring or something. Um, well you could go in and just change this to true. Re-upload the code and now we'll see it actually the first move it makes it's going to run forward. Uh, since mine is not set up to run forward, like it has the rear limit switch it wants you to see hit, 
um, it's going to fall down because it's going to say, hey, I wasn't expecting to hit this limit switch. I was expecting to hit this limit switch, so something's wrong. So you see it there, it hit the limit switch, it stopped, and disabled the motor. All right. So we'll just change that back. Sorry if this is overly simplified, but I know there's not a lot of videos that make this really easy. Uh, they want to walk you through step by step here, which I'd be happy to do as well. I just thought it'd be useful to start making videos for people that just want to see, you know, well-established uh, code that they can use as a starting line. So like, hey, start with this, make the changes that you'd like. All right, steps to get off the limit switch during homing. So that's the next setting. And these are main distance settings. So that one's talking about after the first move. So it goes down, it hits that limit switch, and it's going to move off of it. Let's say you're using a very small limit switch or a hall effector limit switch. Um, you don't need as much space. I'm using mechanical uh, arms here. So I need it to offset more. But maybe you don't need near that. And you notice, like, I'd like to get that little bit of space back. You could reduce this and it will offset from the limit and you could test and see how close you can get it to that and the indicator that you've set it too small is like during the run it's going to hit that limit again so which should never happen so then you just start increasing until it works for your limits all right or if you wanted it to like start its movement up here you could do that and it would start running up here so you could adjust so if you want it starting right off the limit switch it's going to bounce between the two positions but if you set it really high maybe it starts here it's going to bounce between here. So it also sets your lower, your lower distance. We have home travel distance. Um, that's just a fail safe for like if something's going wrong with the system or, um, and it never makes it home, even though it's trying to, like it's running back and it never makes it home, it eventually would turn off. So if you see your sled coming back uh, during the homing sequence, the first sequence, and it never makes it all the way, it stops, uh, just increase this number and try it again. All right, run distance is talking about the stroke, the length of the stroke. So if it's starting here, does it run 5,000 steps or does it run 1,000 and then come back down? And for that example, we'll go ahead and upload one. It was 5,000, I'll upload 1,000, and we'll see that it now is going to have a um, much shorter stroke. And that's just good for different lengths of linear rail. So if you have a much longer linear rail, set your um, that number higher. Or if you have a much smaller one, set it much smaller. So you can see here we're running back, we're homing, and we're going to have a much smaller uh, travel distance. So now it's just bouncing between these two positions. Okay. I'm going to disable it. And what's next? So we'll change that back. Uh, is your speeds. So that's the last thing to discuss. Uh, speed, so step or home speed. That's the speed at which it's homing. <laughs> um, and then step or forward run speed is how fast is it racing forward. Uh, we can leave that at one as an example. I'll make this one eight as the last example. So now it's going to go much, much faster uh, in reverse. Um, and then you also have an acceleration for each one of those movements. So if you want it to ramp up to speed a lot quicker, um, then you would adjust this higher. Uh, so if you want it, let's also increase this acceleration. So now when it goes, uh, starts going down, it's actually going to accelerate a lot faster and it's going to go a top speed higher. And the last speed here before we do that example is just the max speed. That's good to have in the code for position movements with Excel Stepper uh, for editing, so I'll just always leave it in there even if I'm not using it. But let's do that last example. So go on full screen again while we're waiting. Again, if you need help or this is confusing or trying out custom code, feel free to reach out on Discord or if you're looking to hire this out. Uh, Feel free to reach out as well, of course. We also offer like PLC uh, setups as well. So we've home. Um, you can see it's yeah, about the same speed, slow going up a thousand, but now it's gonna much faster race down. Um, slow up, much faster race down because we've adjusted that speed eight times as high. Cool. Well, I hope that was useful. Let me know if this was helpful or not. Um, because I have a lot of these templates because I do stuff from other jobs uh, almost every day. So it's good to have just a lot of templates for a lot of different applications. Maybe it's three stepper motors, maybe it's a stage of stepper motors, that's very common. Or, you know, there's always custom applications or a pump, you know, et cetera. Or you need a user interface, you know, things like that. Uh, cool. All right. Thanks. Bye.